Welcome back to the Knitted Bunnies tutorials and we are now going to start putting your bunny together. So for this tutorial you're going to need your bunny body and legs, your bunny head, your knitting needles, some scissors and your needle. So we're going to be sewing the head on in this tutorial. Um, so what we're going to do is make sure this is stuff quite firmly so if it's quite empty, we'll find that the head may, may move around. So you want the neck stuff quite firmly. Check that you're happy with all of your stuffing. There we go. And we're going to put the head on. Now watch, we're going to put the seam where we sewed it together, which is, is more, much more noticeable, underneath. So we've got the nice, just knitted surfaces above. So we're going to put that to the bottom. Put the head on there, like so. And we're going to use the knitting needles to hold it in place. Um, for a lot of items when we're holding them in place, we use pins. But pins just, it will move around. They're just not, not strong enough really. So the knitting needles are a great way of holding it in place. So what we're going to do is go through between a stitch so we don't damage the wool. And you want to use thin needles for this. Don't use big thick chunky ones because you could leave holes and you're knitting which we don't want so we're going to put one one way and one the other now i've just placed the head on like so so i want it nice and central on the neck with the thinner end the nose pointing forwards the back is flatter and wider so that's the back of the head and you want it so that the head's um roughly like that so the back of the head maybe just past all level with the the back and again make sure you've got your seam at the back of the bunny it's so easy when you're you know trying to get everything else perfect that you miss the obvious like putting the seam underneath and the seam at the back so make sure you're quite you've got it in about the right position so we'll do one needle one way and then the other needle we're going to pop the other way put it near the back so that it's going through into the body i'm just going to gently twist it just really gently so we're not damaging anything and that holds it pretty firmly and we're going to check we're happy before we start sewing so that looks pretty good i might tilt it forward slightly can look quite cute with the head just slightly forward check you're happy with it before you start sewing on so let's look at it make sure it looks pretty central on the side we're quite happy that it's not you know the head's back here um so we're quite happy with the positioning so we're going to start sewing. So what we're going to do is we did leave a strand deliberately on the body and that was so we can sew it together. Now what I'm going to do is thread the needle. And we're going to nearly double it so it's not too long. And now we're going to start our sewing up. So push any bits of stuffing inside. I may zoom in a little bit here just so you can see closer what we are doing. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one stitch on the body and a matching stitch on the head. Now you're trying to keep the stitches level. So when we do a stitch on the head, it's going to be about here. We don't want it over here or here. We'd so because otherwise it'll drag the head across and pull it. So we're looking to keep our stitches here and here. So as level as possible close together so what i'm going to do is first i'm going to do a stitch here on the body it's not as neat there because it's where we've seen so we're just going to do a little horizontal stitch and you're looking to have your stitch around one knitted stitch wide and a knitted stitch is one of these v's here so roughly that width and you can use the stitches as guides if you want so we're going to be careful that we do a stitch quite level So maybe around there and make sure that stuffing is pushed inside. Try not to put your needle through the stuffing where you can because otherwise it tends to get caught and get in the way. So we've done that. So now we're going to do a stitch on the head. We're going to do that one there. So you're going to do similar to when we sew things together. You're going to, um, as we did with a mattress stitch, do two or three. Between two and four is ideal. And then gently pull it. So we've done it like that. And you can see the ladder where it's attached. And it's very close. We don't want to be stitching here and then pulling the stitch over there. So we're keeping it as close as we can. 
and we're kind of working like that the stitches so we've got three stitches there so what I'm going to do is just gently pull so they pull together watch it doesn't pucker and look really puckered and too tight we just want it to pull so that they are close together and quite firm so now we're going to do it's a bit trickier on the head because you can't always do one exact stitch because your stitches aren't this way they're the opposite way around so just do it around the same width so one two three so just aim for about the same width like so and then i'm just going to gently pull and you can see it's knitting together or sewing together neatly we just want it so that stitches aren't really noticeable you don't have to do a perfect job you will get a little bit better with practice because most people don't notice this anyway if we keep our stitches small and neat and white this way they will be very very unnoticeable and watch that you don't accidentally start coming too far down we're trying to work around the top of the neck now you see that row there which looks like it has the v's across the top that one that is where we cast off so what i'm doing is actually just trying to work around a row under that so the stitch underneath that so we'll do a couple and pull so then under here grab that one And the reason we try and keep it one stitch wide as well is that if we start doing two stitches and one stitch and all different you'll find that it doesn't match up brilliantly and you'll find you'll get to the end and you've got it's not sewing on as perfect as you would like so we've done two or three and then gently pull keep pulling it apart like that to make sure we haven't got a gap if we've got a gap we'd maybe need to pull it if you leave it too many stitches, if you did six or more, you probably find you couldn't pull it without really dragging at it. And the worry is that you will could could um, snap, which it just mean re-threading and, and pulling it back. But it's just easier to do it every few stitches. So check we're not leaving gaps. That looks pretty tight to it. And just check that each time you've pulled your gather. Right, so now we're on to the next one. And we're going to one there and one there and then we're going to do the next one here so we've done about four there so we'll just gently pull it's pretty neat we're going to pull it a tiny bit more just to make sure it's nice and secure so we're just carefully working all of the way around doing the one stitch what I would recommend if you're making the bunny for a young child is obviously do not add any safety eyes the general recommendation is not for under threes some people do add safety eyes which you need to do when you're making the head but definitely not for under threes because they can come out and be a choking hazard also don't add any buttons or anything that could be pulled off if you are making it for a young child, I would recommend going around the head, the tail, everything. Go around twice to make sure it's really secure. And always keep an eye on the, the bunny as well, like you would with any other toy, to make sure there isn't wear and tear and anything coming off. Now, because we're nearly round, that needle's getting in our way. So because we're nearly round, I'm going to pull those knitting needles out, put them to one side. And then we'll just finish off because it's pretty much held in position now i wouldn't pull it off any earlier just because you may find your head wobbles around and ends up getting pulled a little bit out of position as you're sewing and then you'll end up with it not as you wanted it if you're unhappy with it when you're finished you could gently pull un un undo all your stitches and start again but it's a little bit faffy so we want to avoid that if we can so there we are, because we've kept it pretty level, look, we're, it's joining up nicely. It's not really stitched there, so we're just going to do the best we can. 
I'm just going to go into this. We don't want any gaps, so I'd go past. If you're not going around twice, go past where you started a few stitches just to make sure we haven't left any gaps. Let's gently pull that and that all looks pretty secure. So now we're going to fasten off. So I'm going to go in where my wool came out through the stuffing and come out somewhere else through a gap between the stitches. Put the stitch in so it vanishes and we're going to go in again where we came out. Now it's somewhere else and just do that probably two or three times. And then what we're going to do is gently pull taut and snip that near the bottom and that will disappear. And then your thread is, is all knotted inside or all threaded through the stuffing inside. So I've never had an end come out that I've done like that. So there we have it. So the head is sewed on all of the way around, nice and firmly and pretty neatly. You can see, look how neat it is. And we can see our head is on our bunny. So it's last, it's starting to take shape. Let's have a look what that looks like. Oops, there we are. As you can tell, I'm not overly technical. <laughs> So there we have it. Our head is now sewn on. And our next tutorial, obviously, we're going to start um, sewing some more parts on. So I shall see you then.